Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar this afternoon. Really appreciate your time today. Um, I know we still have a few people logging on. Um, for people that join late or if you have individuals at your company that weren't able to make it, we are going to be recording this session, so we will be sharing out the recording post-webinar, so you'll certainly have ample opportunity to review the content again, or if you want to share that with anyone else in your organization, you certainly can as well. And then just as an, a, a housekeeping FYI here, everybody who is an attendee is in mute mode. So um, if you have questions, we definitely encourage questions, and we're going to leave some time at the end of the presentation to make sure that we answer those questions. Uh, just put them in the Q&A section inside of the, uh, the panel for GoToWebinar, or put them in the chat. Either way, we will certainly make sure to make sure we answer them, but just so that we don't have a bunch of, you know, people that maybe forgot to mute themselves, it's just easier to keep everyone in a, in a mute boat, but we certainly in, in, encourage questions. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the SMB Help Desk and Cirrus Insights. So it's a, a new partnership that we both have, um, and really it's all about taking Salesforce and Office 365 and providing the best integration for those two platforms. So someone is a, an Office 365 user and also uses Salesforce, or maybe you're thinking about migrating to Office 365, or maybe you're thinking about uh, implementing Salesforce. You know, obviously both of these platforms are really critical to operating your business, and having to toggle back and forth between the two platforms can oftentimes prove challenging. And really what we see is most people tend to live in their inbox. That's really where most of the corresponding and communications with clients and prospects is done. So having to kind of duplicate efforts and go back and forth between my inbox and Salesforce, it's really like me doing work twice. And it's also, you know, there's room for missing information certainly in that scenario because we've got you know two places of information so we're going to talk today about how we very easily integrate these two platforms so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly just let Marvin kind of say a quick hello and introduce himself and and talk a little bit about the SMB help desk and some of the the services that they have and then um, Marvin will kind of kick it back over to me and we'll do a nice overview of, of Cirrus Insight for you guys so Marvin uh, Thank you for joining us, and uh, again, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present. Yeah, no problem. Thanks again, uh, Sue. Uh, everybody, uh, this is Marvin Corbis. I'm the president and founder of the SLB Help Desk. Uh, in case you don't know who we are, we are a um, an IT solutions company, cloud solutions company for the small and medium business. Our whole business is designed around making it possible for uh, small businesses to be able to, to have enterprise-level solutions. Uh, whether it's Salesforce.com type of solutions, business process automation on the Salesforce or Force platform, or communications collaboration solutions using Office 365, uh, hosted VoIP solutions, as well as managed IT services. So all of that we kind of bundle together and allow for customers to be able to leverage our expertise on those platforms to be able to provide an enterprise level uh, solution for their, their organization and their users as a whole. Uh, we're real excited to be a part of the partnership with the Sirius Insight. It takes two of our, our key solution sets, Salesforce.com and Microsoft Office 365, and gives them a connector point, if you will. And we were selected to be one of the first Microsoft Salesforce partners to go to market with uh, Sirius on this, and so we're real excited at the opportunity. The part that uh, I'm really excited about is the ability for the CEOs and managers of the organization to have real-time accountability What's going on with their sales teams and people um, uh, right through the Salesforce portal? I think a lot of times we talk about um, if it didn't, if it didn't, if it isn't in Salesforce, it didn't happen. Uh, this kind of takes that away some of that. It did. So when we have these communications, they're accounted for. And Sue will be showing you exactly how that works. But I um, wanted to take a couple of minutes and say hi. Thanks for joining. Give you a little background of who we are if you didn't know. And if you need more information, my email is right here on the slide. So Marvin at SMBHD. Um, I'd be more than glad to have any follow-up conversation you think of after uh, the webinar. Thanks a lot, Sue. Hey, thanks so much, Marvin. And yeah, we're really excited about the partnership, too. It's been really successful so far. Um, I'm Sue Fernand, and I head up uh, channel sales for Cirrus Insights. So we did a lot of work with Microsoft, and, and the SMD, SMB Help Desk was one of the partners that they immediately identified as a, just a great fit for, for this to be uh, a product that would fit into their portfolio. So we're very, very excited about it. And of course, if you have any questions for me, you can feel free to reach out to me as well. There's my email address. 
So to give you an overview of what Cirrus Insight does, there's really two offerings. And again, this can all be, you can purchase this all from the SMB help desk. But um, the whole idea is around making Salesforce easy for people to use. And whether that's allowing them to do some stuff automatically in the background, and that's kind of the first scenario that we have, um, or giving you an app that you can use inside of Outlook or the Office 365 web app that's really putting Salesforce in that interface so that you can update records and fully manage Salesforce in that interface. If you're looking to just have the syncing of calendar and emails, that's just, you know, happening in the background. So users don't have to behave any differently. They're just going to manage their calendar and send emails the way they always have. But the added benefit is those are going to automatically flow into Salesforce. So I think Marvin made a good point. <laughs> Doesn't If it's not in Salesforce, it didn't happen, right? So sales management is always kind of challenged with, you know, they don't want to nag their sales employees, but they really do need visibility, not just in terms of accountability, but also in terms of, you know, using that, those important metrics to uh, get better ideas around what is the average sales cycle and how many meetings does it normally take for something to move to a closed one status or, you know, what kind of, you know, email uh, activities happening before we actually can consider someone, you know, a lead and now they're turning into a contact. So all that stuff's super important. And I think making it really, really easy for salespeople who are busy and, again, tend to live in their, in, in their inbox, to have that information flow into Salesforce without them having to change behaviors is, is really key. We we also can link the information that's coming from your calendar and your emails in a more, um, you know, contextual way. So you can actually say, hey, I want to link these to Salesforce, but I don't just want them in the activity history. We can relate them to any of the standard objects in Salesforce. So I think for salespeople probably most important would be opportunities and that can link to the most recently created or the most recently modified and that can relate at the account or the contact level so it's not just dumping a bunch of emails in Salesforce it's actually putting them contextually where they should be so again you know someone goes into Salesforce and looks at an opportunity not only are they going to see you know the stages have been updated but they're also going to see what kind of meetings and what kind of email activity have been going on within that opportunity we also have above and beyond that an app that can be sitting inside of the Outlook uh, interface or the Office 365 web app. So that takes it a step further. So now my calendar, my emails are syncing, but now I'm able to go in and also update any Salesforce record. We fully support custom objects and all custom layout, so it's going to look you know, like your Salesforce looks if you were to log into it. You can also leverage some other tools that Salesforce has. So you can use their Salesforce email templates. I'm going to share my screen and show you in a second what we mean by that. Um, we also have a mobile app. So again, you know, it's great that you can do all of this when you're at your desk sitting inside of Outlook, but what happens when you're traveling or at a, a convention for a week? We have a mobile app to solve that problem, and it runs on iOS or Android, and it's, a, it's an email client. It's Cirrus Insight Mobile that we developed, but it allows you to check your email, but also have your contextual Salesforce information there. So again, I can update records. I can, you know, create a contact or lead if they're not in Salesforce. So I'm not having to toggle back and forth between my email on my phone and Salesforce One, which is arguably more challenging than toggling back and forth between Outlook and Salesforce. Um, and then obviously with email and calendar sync, if that's all happening anyway, whether or not I'm using Cirrus Insight Mobile or not. So that's, you know, a, a, if you've got that set up, that's happening no matter what. And just to kind of note, just to give you some, some information on, you know, background with, with Cirrus Insight, we actually originally launched in Gmail back in 2011. At the time, there wasn't anything that Salesforce had for Gmail. But as we started to, you know, really get involved in the Salesforce ecosystem and attend Dreamforce and World Tour events and, you know, work with Salesforce consulting partners, we really found out that, you know, A, Microsoft owns most of the inboxes out there. And there was a, a gap. You know, we kind of thought there's tools like Salesforce for Outlook that would suffice for people that use the, the, the Outlook inbox and Salesforce. We soon found out that, yes, there, that's the case, but <clears throat> there's definitely a gap in, in what can be done there. And people kept saying to us, wow, well, we really love your app, but we don't use Gmail. We're, on, you know, we're looking to move to Office 365. We use Outlook, you know, but we would love to have this type of functionality. So that's what uh, prompted us to be the first to, to introduce an Office 365 and Salesforce integration. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen and show you what this looks like because I always feel like Live demo works better than 
um, going through and showing a bunch of screenshots. So I'm going to go into Outlook and just show you what it looks like. <laughs> so again, in the background, my calendar and my email sync is already happening. So I'm going to go into Salesforce too and show you what that looks like when emails and calendar events are automatically logged. But what, this probably looks familiar to most of you. When you're inside of your Outlook inbox, this is Cirrus Insight, the app. So it's a plugin. So it's all client-side install. So there's nothing has to be set up in Salesforce to use the app. So I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty significant uh, thing to note because it's not a dip difficult installation. It's not like someone's going to have to go into your org and do a lot of setup. It's all client-side setup. Same thing with the email and the calendar sync. It's all done from a dashboard and just enabled. Um, nothing has to be set up in Salesforce. We also support all versions of Salesforce. We don't need to be concerned with what version you're on. You know, it's all it's all going to work. When I'm communicating with people that email me, when I click on their email or open it up, their information pops out in the side panel. So this is showing me what is what are they in Salesforce and what is their information in Salesforce. So this person happens to be a lead in Salesforce, gives me some relevant you know contact information. We also have email tracking. Um, so that's part of our app, and I think that's a pretty great tool to have because when you're corresponding with people and sending a bunch of email, you, you don't know if they opened it or not. So if you send them five emails and you haven't heard back, you're either going to assume that, hey, they've opened them, they're just not interested, or, hey, they've just not opened my email. But having the visibility to see that they've opened an email and also clicked on links, so we do also put links. Um, as part of our email tracking. So if you do have links in your email to like your website or proposal or something like that, you'll know that they clicked on that as well. So you can see in the snapshot you know, how engaged someone is with your correspondence because we're going to show you the past seven days of email tracking activity in that snapshot. We're also going to show you any upcoming activities that you have and any past activities. So all of this information I see when, when it loads, but more, more importantly, I can go in and edit all of that information too. So if I need to update this person's lead information, I can by just quickly hitting edit. And it's, uh, it's using the same permissions and same you know um, workflow and rules that I need to use if I were in Salesforce. If I don't put the right info in and I try to save, it's going to give me the same error that it would inside of Salesforce. I can also see related list information too. So really anything I would normally need to do in Salesforce, I can do right inside the side panel. Same thing for if somebody's a contact alternatively. When their snapshot loads, I see their contact information. And again, I can see you know, email tracking stats. So I have sent this person an email in the past seven days and he's opened it up. So I know that, okay, he got my email and he's opened it up. So I know that he's at least you know, read the content that I've sent to him. If you have opportunities, obviously this is really key for salespeople, but we're going to show you, you know, right here how many are open and what that value is and how many are closed and what that value is. And I can also drill down into that and see and also add new opportunities right from here. So if someone's sending me an email about um, a potential uh, sale, I can go ahead and create that right here in my inbox instead of having to go leave what I'm doing here, leave my workflow, go into Salesforce and set that up. Or what you see a lot of times, people jotting stuff down in a notepad and at the end of the week they're updating Salesforce. I'm putting it in now and the stages are going to be more accurate because I'm going to be updating this you know, as I get more and more correspondence from this particular contact. And same thing with creating opportunities. Obviously I have to create those the same way I would inside a Salesforce. If you want to go in and create you know other content. Um, you know, obviously we're adding the emails automatically. Um, we're also adding calendar events. But let's say I wanted to generate a task right from here, I can do that. I can create a task. I can create an event. If I'm corresponding with this person via phone instead, I can go in and log this as a call. So I can do anything and really keep track and make sure that all of the correspondence that I'm having with this particular person is logged into Salesforce. So my sales manager can run a report and see what kind of activity has been going on or what kind of activity I'm responsible for. And it's all, you know, logged to Salesforce quite easily. We'll cancel that out. When I'm sending email, there's a lot of options that I have too. So obviously I'm doing email sync, so it's sending the email in. And just so you know, you don't have to use the sync if you're using our app. Um, if you're not, you know, if you're someone that wants to kind of choose ad hoc what emails are going into Salesforce, you can disable the sync and choose on the fly. You also can choose to very quickly add stuff to Salesforce. I'll show you an example here. 
or you could be very specific when you add to Salesforce where it goes. There's lots of options around the email and also lots of options around the calendar sync. I mean, you can choose to sync the calendar or not, or you could even choose to sync the calendar, but sync and don't sync events that are private. Or if you're using, you know, uh, you're you're organizing your calendar by color, you could choose what colored events sync into Salesforce. So there's certainly options around all of these features. When I am sending correspondence, again, it's going to pop this, this snapshot out so I see who I'm corresponding with. If I wasn't automatically adding to Salesforce, that's where I would do this. Again, it's doing that for me, and it is using a it's using the smart link, so it's actually finding an opportunity, because that's how I have mine linked. Um, it's finding the most recently modified one and linking it there. Um, if I don't want to add this email to Salesforce for some reason, I can do that. Or if I want to add it, but I don't want to add it to that particular record, I can go in and choose. You can re be very specific with where the information ends up. And again, if there's attachments, I can choose to attach those. You can also enable that as part of the sync too if you want attachments going into Salesforce automatically. If I'm not automatically tracking my email, I can turn that on here. And again, that's settings you can set up. So you can choose to track all your emails by default. You can track links and um, you know, uh, opens and clicks on links. You also could choose to maybe track everything, but don't track internal messaging. So if you're not concerned with people in your organization, you, know, you can turn it off internally. I'm also able to access my Salesforce email templates from here. I think it's a really powerful feature because I think Salesforce email templates is kind of one that doesn't get used a lot. It's it's kind of a more, I guess you'd call it, advanced feature, right? So you'd have to know where to access these in Salesforce. Now we give it to you right inside the inbox. So I want to correspond with someone. Again, these templates might be created for me already, or I can create a template right inside of our app or edit an existing template. So if I'm creating a new one, I just need to give it a subject. I can pull in all of my merge fields from Salesforce and get all my custom objects in here. I can insert images and links so I can make a really nice looking template. And then I can give it a name and a description and decide where I want it to live in Salesforce. So again, I don't even have to go to Salesforce to create a brand new one. But let's say I'm going to use an existing one. I'll pick one that I already have for my templates. It's giving me access to those folders that live in Salesforce. So access my own. And then I can see all of my templates. And again, same thing with you know the permissions. If I'm not able to edit a template in Salesforce, I'm not going to be able to edit it inside of our template editor either. But again, because we're using email tracking, it will show you the percentage open rate. So you'll know if someone, you know, if a template's working really well, if it's got a high percentage open rate. Once I click on that and I hit merge, it just pops it right into the body of the email and then I can send it out. So it makes it really, really easy to use Salesforce email templates. And it's a time saver, right? I mean, salespeople, we kind of tend to send the same stuff and responses quite frequently. Or maybe you're doing some outreach. And I'm doing a lot of outreach right now for Dreamforce. So I'm sending the same kind of content over and over again. It's really, really easy for me to just pull that template and use it. And just so you know, we do have that mobile client. Templates are supported from the mobile client too. So I could even do this for my Android or my iPhone when I'm on the go and, and, and leverage an email template. In addition to the templates, we also have a really cool, I love this feature, I use it all day long, especially if you're someone that is booking meetings quite frequently, as salespeople oftentimes do. Instead of me you know, emailing back and forth, you know, hey, does 2 p.m. tomorrow work or does 5 p.m. this day work? And then, you know, God forbid you work with people in different time zones or, uh, you know, people in other countries. That, that can prove really challenging. Instead, I can click on book meeting. This pulls my calendar and Outlook right into the app, and I can just provide times that I'm available. Now, I'm an East Coast time. If I want to view a different time zone, I can. So I can choose a different time zone. Or I can just display these times to the person I'm sending the email to. All of these fields are I can edit. So I could say meeting at Dreamforce. I could put the address of the meeting. I can put a description in there. Once I hit insert insert times to email, this is what the person on the other end sees. You know, hey, I want to set up a meeting with you. Click a time that works. If they're not on Eastern Standard, so you know, obviously uh, Marvin and Juliana are not. They're in Central, so they could click view in your time zone, and then they'll just populate their time zones, and they can click a time. Once they click that time, it books it automatically on my calendar, and they get an invite. 
So it's real instant and all of the relevant information is populated into the calendar invites. They know they're meeting me at Dreamforce. They know where they're meeting me. I could have put my GoToMeeting link in there, my WebEx, whatever your you know, online meeting uh, platform of choice is. But it just makes it super easy to, to get meetings on the calendar. And because my calendar is syncing with Salesforce, now that meeting's in, in, in Salesforce as well. So I've done a whole lot of things there with maybe just one email that might have taken you know, numerous times back and forth. And it is allowing you to you know, select if, let's say, these times don't work. They can say, hey, these times don't work, and I'll get a message back. Or let's say this person doesn't pick a time and they wait till next week and now they pick a time and my calendar's booked at that time. You know, it's going to tell them, hey, that's no longer available. Here are some times, or again, they can say none of these times work. If people share their calendar with you, you can also book on other people's behalf. So we use this at our, our company all day long because we've got a, an SDR team that books on behalf of the account executive. So you can just scroll down and see the other individuals that you share calendar with. We also give the ability just to give someone a public calendar link. So instead of me providing times, I could just say, you know what, here, here's my calendar, go ahead and find a time. So this would be put inside the email. So it just basically says view calendar. Then they can click and they'll see my availability. And obviously you set up your working hours and it's not showing your calendar items. It's just showing when you're available, when you're not available, and then they can pick a time. So there's, you know, the, the ability to display what works for you or just give someone access to your calendar and it's all again part of the app and I think the great thing about it is once someone secures the time you know then that is also being uh, you know put into Salesforce so that meetings already logged there that upcoming meeting in the in the upcoming events just close this down go back into Outlook um, one of the other things that I think tends to to pile up sometimes in Salesforce are tasks so if I go into Salesforce, you know, a lot of times you'll get that little pop-up that's showing you, oh, you know, got all these tasks, and here's what's today, and here's what's overdue. So instead of me having to even go into Salesforce to do that, I can do this right inside of Outlook. So again, I've got that same way to kind of filter out the view. So maybe I just want to see what's on the docket for the next seven days. And this is going to pull those all into Outlook. And I can fully manage them in here, you know, just like I would inside of Salesforce. So if I want to open this up and reassign it somewhere else or close it out, um, I'm able to do that. If at any time you need to go into Salesforce, then you have these little clouds. They'll just take you right into that record. So you'll see that cloud quite frequently. Um, it just gives you the ability to very quickly go into Salesforce, but it takes you right into that record. I also don't have to wait for someone to correspond with me to find their record in Salesforce. So if I wanted to look up for example, if I want to look up Marvin, maybe I want to give him a call, I can just search. And again, I can search a bunch of different ways. I can do a power search, which will search across all my fields, or I could do a custom. Again, I see all my custom objects in here. So you have lots of ways to search inside of Salesforce. But once that search is done, you know, I could pull up Marvin's contact now. It's going to load him in the side panel. And again, it's got its phone number here, so now I can copy this and make a phone call, or maybe I want to email him, or we want to log some information into his record in Salesforce. I can do that. Also, if someone's not in Salesforce and they send you an email, it's basically going to pop out in the side panel. What we're doing is we're looking into Salesforce to see if we find a match based on email. So if we don't find a match based on email, we're just going to tell you that. Hey, there's no record of this email address in Salesforce. What do you want to do? We do also search name. Um, so it does find other names. So I've done a lot of demos in different orgs, so there's a bunch of Sufernans <laughs> in our Salesforce. Um, but you're able to say, okay, yeah, that's not the same person, or maybe I want to add this email as an alternate email to an existing record. Or I could say, yeah, this is brand new. Let's go ahead and create them as a new, um, a new lead. So again, you can do that right in the side panel, so I don't need to go and log into Salesforce now and copy and paste. We can also use signature extraction. So if there was a signature in the email, we can pull that information. So we can pull company name, um, title, you know, anything we're getting in the signature to auto-fill the forms to make that process of creating a new contact or lead even easier in the side panel and not even having to copy and paste out of my out of my inbox to do that. I can cancel that out. Inside of your settings is where you kind of you know decide what you're using in terms of the app. <coughs> so for example, if I want to set up calendar sync, um, it's showing me, you know, my last sync was four minutes ago, my next sync's in a minute, so it's very, very quick, the sync. If you want to go and edit your sync settings, you can. So if you want to set up the 
or custom customized enablement of where the calendar event's going, you can. Same thing for the email sync. So I have the email sync set up, but you want to manage your preferences around that, you can. If you don't want email attachments to go to the chatter feed, you can turn that off. And if you don't want to do sync at all, you can go in and disable it at any time. The signature extraction is really just, hey, do you want to use that tool where it's going to pull what it can from the signature to auto-create a record? Or do you want to, you know, not use that, which, you know, I would say most people want to because it does really save some time. And you can even say, hey, just fill the form and then I can save it. Or you can just review results first. So you've got lots of options around that as well. For tracking, you know, I'm going to be able to see, obviously, in the snapshot, my email tracking stats. And if I open up an email... I'll be able to see right in the email the tracking stats. So inside, oh, I didn't track this one, so I won't be able to see it in there. Uh, but you can also search any of your stats inside of email tracking. This just gives you a nice little way to view your tracking. Or maybe you want to look up someone in particular to see if they've gotten your email. So it's going to show me the most recent stuff that's been opened. Um, I like to, at the end of the week, go in and look at all my unopened ones. So this way I know, okay, these are people who didn't open my email this week. <clears throat> Maybe I reach out to them a different way. Maybe I give them a call, whatever. Um, but I can also just search in here. So maybe I want to search, keep using Marvin here as the example. Sorry, Marvin. <laughs> but I can go ahead and search Marvin and see. We got a dupe in here for him. But I can see how many emails I've sent Marvin and whether or not, oh, look, he hasn't opened my Dreamforce email yet. <laughs> so I can see if he's opened that stuff up. I can even go back in and view the email. And then I'm able to, to see, you know, I probably deleted this one out, so that's why I can't open it. But you can see all your tracking stats right inside of Outlook. So I think it's a really powerful tool for salespeople because, you know, flying blind and sending correspondence, that can be, you know, kind of frustrating. But knowing that, all right, I sent this person an email. They have opened it five times. They've clicked on my link. So you know at least they've got the content. It just allows you to be a bit more prepared for that follow-up. You know, obviously, you don't tell them that, hey, I'm, tra I'm tracking all your emails, but at least you kind of know how to go into, into that conversation. So I'm also going to go in and quickly show you the other side of this. So again, I'm pulling up Marvin's record here. So obviously, Marvin and I and Juliana, we are corresponding a lot with this new partnership, but I haven't gone into Salesforce to log any of this stuff. Um, if I go into uh, the activity history here, and I hate to scroll on the screen, guys, apologies, you'll see there's a bunch of meetings in here. We've got a uh, you know, meeting that we have today. We've got emails. We've got all this correspondence that I have not done anything but you know, manage my email in my inbox and manage my calendar. But now all that stuff is flowing into Salesforce. So even if you're not using the Cirrus Insight app. This is a great part of it, I think, this syncing piece. And I think I love what Marvin said in the beginning, is now this can be turned into you know, a custom report and a sales manager can run our activity history on, on reps. Or maybe I'm, you know, someone's on vacation and I need to know what's going on with this account, what's going on with this opportunity. I can't really log into someone's email inbox or calendar to get that unless they share their calendar with me. Having the visibility right inside Salesforce, where it really should be, that's what Salesforce should be used for, is really key and, and an easy way to get that content there. Um, the easiest way, really, path of least resistance, I think. You know, putting it in the inbox or doing an automatic sync in the background is really, you know, the preferred way to do it. So I'm going to go back to our slides. There we go. Oh, we went through these already. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so as I mentioned, there's two different options. So there's a calendar and an email sync with Salesforce, and then there's a full Cirrus Insight app. So the full Cirrus Insight app includes the calendar and email sync anyway. So obviously if you start with just the email sync with Salesforce and you want to upgrade to the full Cirrus Insight app, you certainly can do that. Um, it's a really, really easy, you know, migration. With the, the one thing that I like about um, the calendar and the email sync is, you know, if you're trying to not introduce a lot of new stuff to people and you want them to be able to, um, you know, have an easy way to just manage calendar, manage email, and have stuff go into Salesforce, that's not introducing anything new. That's just kind of happening in the background, and you're able to have that information go into the platform. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way would be if you want to give people more access 
and give them the ability to update records, then you'd want to start with the, the full Cirrus Insight app. You also can mix and match your licensing too. So you're not tied into one or the other. Um, so if you know you think some people would benefit from the full app and others just need email and calendar sync, you can fully do that as well. The pricing respectively is $12 per user per month, but it's sold annually, so it's $144 per user per year if you're just doing calendar and email sync. If you want the full Cirrus Insight app, it's $29 per user per month, and again, it, $348 per user per year. So those are the pricing. And again, SMB Help Desk is a reseller of ours. So you can purchase all of this directly through them or put it on your contract with your Office 365 or Salesforce licensing. So you're not going to have to, you know, execute any sort of paperwork with Cirrus Insight. You can do this all, you know, right through the SMB Help Desk. <coughs> so some can I add something about that real quick? Of course. So if you are already um, a SMB, Microsoft Office 365, S CSP, that means you're buying your licenses and paying for them quarterly, monthly, uh, semi-annually, whatever, whatever process that you're paying for those with SMB, we will offer you the same cycle of billing for your Cirrus uh, app as well. So you'll have all your licenses that will be able to be billed on the same cycle as your Office 365 license. So you won't have to do the full year up front if you don't want. So just as oh, an extra excellent. benefit for uh, our customers. Um, not, not everybody's going to offer you that, but uh, we do. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. That makes it easy, right? You don't have to manage multiple subscriptions, just one, one, one thing of paperwork versus multiple, right? Exactly. Awesome. So, yeah, so we want to make sure that we leave some room for Q&A, but just kind of some quick calls to action. Um, if you're going to be at Dreamforce, we're going to be there. Marvin's going to be there. We'd love to meet with you guys. Um, we do have a couple of booths in the Expo Center, but we have dedicated meeting space at Thirsty Bear Restaurant, which is really close, right, you know, one road away from the Convention Center. And we have the whole upper floor, so it's a really great spot to kind of get away from the craziness, plug in your phone, charge up. Refreshments, obviously, are served day, all day long, and, you know, Marvin and I would love to meet with you there. Obviously, if, you know, you're not going to be there, and or maybe your time is pretty tight at Dreamforce. You know, reach out to the folks at the SMB Help Desk and, and book something online. We'd really love to kind of get an understanding of how you're using Salesforce, um, you know, how you're using Office 365, and really what's the best way to provide you know really good integration for you. And there's also a very very easy way to do a free trial of this too. So you're not going to have to you know pay for like a, a a trial experience. It's really really easy to enable. Again, we're not enabling anything in Salesforce. We're not going to disrupt anything um, inside of your org. But we can give you guys access to a free trial of the calendar and the email sync or the full. Cirrus Insight for Outlook app, and and that can again all be done. All of this you know sales information inquiries can all be uh, done through the SMB Help Desk, and that's the uh, relevant contact information there. And this PowerPoint, you know, we'll share this over um, so you can have access to these. These are just links that I think, just helpful links. There's a video, a company traction on demand. Um, Microsoft actually did this video for us. We're really excited about it. It's just showing how they use Office 365 and Salesforce to, you know, fully run their business in the cloud and you know the productivity they kind of talk about what they were doing <laughs> versus what they're doing now and how it's very you know how transformational it was uh, in terms of both platforms and then just some links you know talking about the, the full app and then also you know just how the email sync and how the calendar sync works and a couple of good blog posts on those as well so I guess with that um, we'll turn this over for any questions that anyone has I'm just going to quickly look into the Q&A and see what kind of questions that we got. Okay, so someone was on and had to run. Um, question was, can we sync multiple Outlook users? We have distributors with different email domains and would want them to be able to use this as well. Okay, yes, for sure. So I'm assuming the question means you're someone that manages um, multiple Outlook accounts, multiple email accounts inside of your inbox, and the answer is yes, and actually, you would not need to have more than one Cirrus Insight license for that to happen. So if you're managing through your Outlook account multiple email accounts, we can sync and, and provide you full Cirrus Insight in the inbox to, um, to Salesforce. So that's very, very easy for us to do. Uh, number two was, is there a different layout for community users 
compared to full out Salesforce users. Yeah, so we're basically giving you a window into Salesforce. So if you're a community user, you do log in a different way. So you're gonna log in with the community URL. And then think, obviously you don't have access to all of the you know, objects you normally have with uh, the full you know, Salesforce uh, sales cloud. We don't display those because obviously <laughs> they're not there so any customization or any you know different ways obviously Salesforce is a great platform because it is so customizable we support all of that with our apps you can edit the layout um, you're able to pull in custom objects you can edit what you're seeing in the side panel so all of that is completely customizable okay so number three was so no Gmail sync at all. No, actually, we do still fully support Gmail. So if there's Gmail users out there, we can sync Gmail. We do have an app for Gmail as well. And then how would this, there's lots of questions here. This is great. <laughs> how would this work in the mobile setting? So the mobile setting, when you use Cirrus Insight Mobile, it's a free app, and it's available, obviously, if you're an, an Apple user uh, via the App Store. If you're a Google user, um, Android user, it's uh, you know through Google Play. When you log into that, you're choosing what your email address is, and then you're also authenticating to your Salesforce account. Uh, so that's how we're pulling in the emails. And then we're also pulling in the contextual Salesforce information. So it's really easy to set it up on your phone. It takes like two seconds. And once you're in there and you're checking email, you know, it's, it's automatically synced with your email environment. So if I check something in Cirrus Insight Mobile and delete it or move it to a folder or do what I do with it, that's all reflected back into Outlook when, I, when I'm back you know, in, the, in the full client environment. Um, does a person open up their mail on their iPhone and have the side panel in it. So no, it's not something that sits inside of the native mail app on your phone. It is an email client. So instead of going into that little envelope on your iPhone, you would go into Cirrus Insight Mobile and all your email would be there. Um, so it's a little different. You know, I'll be honest with you. Some people think, well, I don't know that I want to do that. Once you start doing it, I'll tell you what, you won't want to stop doing it. One of the things I like about it is it really allows me to separate work and personal because if I was just checking the email app on my phone, you know, I'm gonna, even if it's the weekend, I'm going to certainly be more inclined to go ahead and check work as well, where now I've just got you know work set up in Cirrus Insight Mobile and then my regular stuff's coming into the native mail app on my phone. So the, again, it's going to give you full abilities and I think even add some stuff because you can use that book meeting feature when you're sending emails from mobile, which is huge. I forgot to mention that before, but I love that because a lot of times I'm on the road and I want to secure a time with someone and to try to look at my calendar on my phone and then try to type that into my email. I can use that same really great book meeting feature right from the mobile app. And then I think the templates too. You know, a lot of times there's kind of that standard thing you might be sending to someone. You can pull in an email template instead of typing or narrating something on your phone. And there's another question here. <laughs> Are there offline capabilities with this? So no, there's not. Unfortunately, we do need it to communicate with Salesforce. So if you're not online, um, currently there's not anything we can do. Obviously, the email and the calendar sync is happening all the time. So if you're not online, but people are sending you email and calendar requests, that, that is working. Um, but to have the, the full app, you do need to be online. So if you're in, on the airplane, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to use our app for a little while. And then there's another question. What are the best practices with this for salespeople and managers? What should salespeople be more inclined to do with this? So I think the best practices for, for salespeople and sales management is, you know, obviously I think, um, you know, one of the reasons why we love working with the SMB Help Desk is they've got expertise on both ends, Office 365 and Salesforce. I think it's important to really understand how, how you're using Salesforce. You know, more importantly, how do you want it, Salesforce to be used, right? So you may have, and I'm sorry, I have a call coming in. You may have very specific needs around how Salesforce, you want its data to flow in there, but it's just for whatever reason not. Um, so I think we need to find out what's, what, what is the information that you want to have in Salesforce and what's the best way for us to provide an easy way for it to get in there. And again, if, if you've got salespeople that you know, want to update records and are pretty comfortable with how Salesforce is working in the background, I think the full app is, is better because it's just going to give them more functionality. If you've got people that are kind of newer to the platform and, and really just want to you know, kind of work the way they were always working. I think the email and the calendar sync is a good way to kind of start that process, and and then the full app later on is a good solution. All right, so that was a there was a lot of questions there. That was great. 
Um, is there a minimum number of user licenses that need to be ordered? No, there are not. So this is not a one-to-one. -one. You know, we'd love that obviously, but normally we don't have a hundred percent attachment in an organization. You know, obviously we're mostly tied to salespeople and to marketing people. So there's no minimum, and you can also mix and match. So if you want some people doing emailing CalSync and others using the full app, we can completely support you there. Um, do we need to have Pardot to have email tracking or just using the regular emails and templates through Salesforce? Great question. No, you do not need to have Pardot. Um, we also use Pardot because you know our marketing team uses that, but email tracking is all done through our app, so it's part of Cirrus Insight. And if you, I, I mentioned before that you don't need to install anything into Salesforce, and you don't, but if you want to have email open rates from our tracking, log to Salesforce. We do provide an analytics package. Again, it's free, but it does need to be installed in your org. If you do that, then you can have the tracking result from Cirrus Insight log to Salesforce as well, much like what you see with Pardot. Another thing to note is when you use Pardot, um, you are also able to see the Pardot information, the Pardot scoring inside of Cirrus Insight because you know we as well use Pardot. So if I go in and someone is corresponding with me in the layout, I can see the Pardot information. So you do have the ability to, to see that as well. Let's click on this next one here. Oh, that was the same thing. I had the clicks, opens, and templates. So yeah, we're not tracking anything that's sent through Pardot, but anything that you're sending, so if you're using Salesforce email templates and you're using uh, tracking, then you are going to completely see that, obviously, inside of Cirrus Insight using our app, or if you've used, if you've uh, installed analytics, that will be inside of there as well. Okay, there's one more question. Um, how does this differentiate from Salesforce for Outlook? I think I mentioned early on in the in the session, you know, one of the reasons why we developed this integration is because we really found, you know, I hate knocking other things, but we really found that Salesforce for Outlook really wasn't meeting the needs of, of, of people using both platforms of Outlook and, and um and Salesforce. And you know, I think uh, performance wise we've heard some things um, you know it's free so then that becomes into play of hey, it's a free app so you know you're not if what kind of tech support you get around it so those are some of the complaints that we heard but the most common thing that we heard was you don't you have still have to go into Salesforce to do a lot of things with Salesforce for Outlook so there's still a lot of steps that have to happen in Salesforce where you know again are people going to complete those steps if they can't completely close it out in Outlook you know some will but a lot won't I think the email and the calendar sync are also big too because those are you know completely uh, bi-directional so even if something is logged in Salesforce as a calendar event that's going to show up on my calendar and Outlook and we also fully support updates and changes so if I change something on my calendar and Outlook it's going to reflect that edit in Salesforce and vice versa and um, then also you know being able to use templates the email tracking you know, there's a there's a slew of other kind of higher things beyond just the basic functions of Salesforce for Outlook um, but we've had you know people kind of do evaluations on both and you know, obviously ours is a paid app, so Salesforce for Outlook has the fact that it's free going for them. But again, once you start to look at the amount of time that's being saved from from a salesperson's perspective, and you know, ultimately the amount of data that's reportable and you know can be used for metrics and and used for um, you know duplicating behaviors when things really work well, I think that that's really worth the app pays for itself once you see you know the ten time. Uh, user adoption increase with the platform. So those are all the questions that we have. Uh, Marvin or Juliana, is there anything else that you guys want to add? Um, no, nothing I can think of. Jules? Nope, nothing from my end. Thanks, Sue. Awesome. Hey, thanks everybody on the call. It was really, I'm really glad you took the time today to spend with us. And like I said, if you're at Dreamforce, we'd love to, to meet with you or find another way to, to get you some more information if you need it. And Marvin and Juliana, once again, it's great to work with you guys. And uh, we will talk to you soon. We'll, and this recording will be sent out and some follow-up and, and next step stuff as well. Awesome. Thanks, Sue. You go, everybody have a great day. Yeah, have a great afternoon, afternoon everybody. Bye-bye.